Knowing your basic one octave major scales in the first position on your cello is essential to starting this wonderful journey of discovery with this beautiful instrument that has had four centuries of music written for it. But in order to do this, you must know your scales. And we start, of course, with our scale book. Before we get into all the notes, I want to explain what a scale is. It is a sequence of intervals in between notes. In the Western world, we have a sequence of seven notes, including the note at the beginning, it will be eight notes. So they are eight notes in total, octave. Between these notes, every tone, every frequency is divided by a distance of either whole or half steps or whole or half tones. Your fingerboard on your cello is divided into half tones, half steps. The cello player's hand naturally creates three half steps in between the first and second, second and third, third and fourth. And if it's not clear, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. You have four fingers. The thumb is not considered a finger in the pedagogy of cello. So when you have a major scale, which is a sequence of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half tones. And so here we have our major scale and just written out again whole whole half and then whole 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 half if you take any frequency any note and divide these notes into whole and half steps in between them you can play any scale any major scale so let's do this Let's start on the second string right here. You can pizzicato if you want to. I'm going to bow to make this easy and clear to understand. And you're going to take your index finger and place it here on the piece of wood that raises the string off of the fingerboard. That's called the nut. Okay. And you're going to make a number three. Space your fingers out nice, about three centimeters in between your fingers or or, or basically almost 1.75 inches, 1.5 inches in between the digits. You're going to create the first whole tone. So see right here, remember the cello player's hand is divided into half tones. The first tone in our major scale that we're going to play is what? It is a whole tone. So here's the D. Nothing's being played. I'm just placing my finger here on the nut, then making that whole tone, that whole step. The next note you see in our graph is another W. So take our hand, slide it up, put your index finger where that third finger was, three fingers, two half steps. And then we have a half tone. There it is right here. There's our half tone that we need to play. So take your finger, index finger once more and then make two fingers, that's your half tone. The next note is what? It is a whole tone, and there's going to be three of them in succession with each other. So place your index finger here, make that number three spaced apart, and as you get closer to the bridge, your fingers are going to come closer together. They will compress. So here's that note. I just made the half step two, here we go. You don't need to know what the name of the note is at this point. You just need to know the difference of whole and half steps. It's super essential to learning any major scale. So there it is. There's my whole tone. That's the first. Here's the second one. Here's the third one. Again, use your fingers. And the last note, we have to go a half tone. There it is right here. So let's take our hand, slide it up and put those fingers very close together. And there we have a major scale. So now without stopping, whole tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, whole tone, whole tone, half tone.
Now we just played these notes as if we were walking up a single flight of stairs. But you can also have those notes occur not only in one direction, but also on two different strings. And the point where, you know, those steps sort of stop and you come back and you start on the second flight of stairs, that will be the A. And so now we're going to take our attention to the music here and shift our eyes up to here. And these are the open strings. So this is an open string here and this is an open string here. And that's what the zero means. The one, three, four are fingerings. The sharp sign looks like a hashtag sign right here, modifies a note. We'll get into the details of all these later, but for now, the most important thing is this finger pattern. Zero, one, three, four, zero, one, three, four, in what we know as the D major, because we start on the D. The D has two sharps, the F sharp and the C sharp. But for the purpose of today's lesson, let's just become familiar with the D major scale. Now, we just played the D major scale going up the string, which is fine, but now let's play it in the first position without moving. Here we go. Now, instead of moving, let's make that whole tone. There it is. And now leave your hand here. Whole tone, half tone. Then, instead of moving your hand, that would be the A, so an open A. Whole tone, whole tone, whole tone, half tone. And descending the scale is just as easy as going up. Whole tone, whole tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, and then whole tone. That's essentially what a D major scale is. Now, to quickly explain these right here, whether it's a sharp, a flat, or a natural, these are things called accidentals. They're modifications to the note, the natural occurring note. There's a flat. These are flats. A sharp raises the note a half step. So. It raises the note, and on cello, everything is relative to the pitch. So when you play notes that are higher, you actually lower, you play lower, closer to the ground, and notes that are lower on the same string, you actually play higher. So it's a sort of world of opposites. So a sharp will go, will raise the note a half step, and a flat will lower the note a half step. Sharps raise the notes while flats lower the note. It's straightforward. And they have their corresponding symbols. Imagine this looking as a flat B. And this is just, well, a hashtag. That's the symbol that they chose at the time. If you are wondering why, the, let's say, the F right here, the F sharp is modified, why only some are modified, remember that distance of whole and half steps. And we have these natural occurring notes. So we go to the keyboard to understand what this actually means. Here we have a C. And if I were to play each one of the white keys, these keys are rendering what we call in the Western world natural notes. C natural, B natural, A natural, F natural. They're all natural. They're all white keys. Remember, let's go back. Whole steps and half steps. Do you remember the combination? Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So there we have the combination right there, the second line. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And so if I were to play a C major scale, a whole step is right there. So there's a note in between whole step. So whole step, whole step. Notice there's no note in between there, and there is not a note in between there as well. And that is where your half steps come in. Your half step right here and here is dictated by that. And so, if we were to start not on this note, but on the D, and we're going to slide our keyboard over, 
we still need to play the same combination of whole steps and half steps. So here we go. D to E, that's a whole step. We can't do that. That's what we have to do because we have to make that whole step right here. So, and that black key is essentially the third finger here on the D string. And if we continue going, there you go. That's that whole step we needed to make. And then that note is essentially this C sharp. And then that half step. So now that you know what the scale is, it's a combination of whole and half steps, and you now understand why we make a modification, whether we raise it or we lower it. Now let's simply play these scales through. Okay, so I'll explain it and then we'll do a full playthrough at the end. First is D major. We start on the open D, which is the second string. E, F sharp, G, then open A, B, C sharp, D, and then it descends the way it goes up. Always go up and down the scale. C sharp, B, A, G, F sharp, E, D. Let's repeat this for G major. Starting here on the third string, one sharp in G major, the F sharp. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. We continue with C major which is the last string. As you notice in the key signature here, it is empty. This is the key signature area right here, and there's nothing here. That means these are all natural occurring notes. And as we have just learned with our keyboard, the C are all the white keys, the natural notes. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and descend. Now we're going to take a jump in our pedagogy to learning the first extension. The extension on your cello is always going to happen between your first and second finger along the neck. And so this is the A major. As you notice, there are three modifications, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. And in order to play this combination of whole and half steps, that's an A right here. We have to make, remember, it's a whole step, whole step at the beginning of, a, of any major scale. So because our hand only renders a, a whole step and a half step, a whole tone and a half tone, we have to make an expanded hand and we expand our hand through the index finger and middle finger along the neck. My tip, put your hand in the first position, slide up a half step, release your index finger, torque it backwards, one, two, plus four. And that's how you play this. A major. A. B. C sharp. D. E. F sharp. G sharp. A. G sharp, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, B natural, A. So the EXT stands for extension. We move on to the F major, which is the very beginning of the series of flat scales. This has one flat, the B flat, F, G, A, B flat, remember that half step needed to be made. 
C D E F natural We move on to B flat major it has two flats both B flat and E flat second finger here and now we will make an extension to the opposite direction to the E flat and the B flat here on the second and first string B flat C extend backwards that's the open D here we go E flat F natural G A B flat B flat A G F natural E flat D C B flat The next scale we play the last one on the page is E flat major three flats B flat E flat and A flat same fingerings it's going to be extending back on both of these strings to the A flat and to the E flat start on E flat second finger first position on the fourth string the C string E flat F G A flat B flat C D E flat there's your B flat A flat G F and E flat I recommend using a chromatic tuner as you play these scales to really learn what these notes sound like also of course if you have tapes put them on your cello so you can start training the spaces not the places but here's a word about using a chromatic tuner the machine most likely will show a tone whether it's a sharp or flat now sometimes they can be called the same thing an A flat can also be a G sharp those are called N harmonics so don't be confused if you're playing this and you have a Korg TM60 on your stand here and you're playing A flat major and well it's showing up as a G sharp worry not the G sharp is the same N harmonic tone as the A flat it may be considered a little boring to learn scales and tedious and it may be super intimidating because there's a lot of information even on this first page your se sequence of intervals and things in two languages and EXTs and oh my gosh that's a lot yes welcome to the world of cello it's time to play the scales we set our metronome at 60 beats a minute we'll begin on D major and descend the page here we go one two three four <laughs> G major start on the third string one two three four C major starting here on the fourth string one, two, three, four. Now let's play the A major. Take your hand, put it in first position. Slide up a half step. And then take your index finger and make that extension backwards. One, two, plus four. One, two, three, A major. Then 
Let's continue to F major. It's the fourth finger here on the C string. One, two, three, four. We follow that up with B flat major, second finger in first position on the G string, extending backward to the E flat and B flat. Same concept, extension between your first and second finger. One, two, three, four. The last scale we end on is E flat major, second finger on the C string, and of course extending back to the A flat and E flat on the third and second string. One, two, three. Thank you for watching my video today on how to play major one octave scales in first position on your cello up to three sharps and three flats. This exercise is provided to you, of course, by my channel and my scale book, which you can purchase anywhere online from Amazon.com. And if you would like to support my work even further, you can check me out on Patreon. But the best thing you can do is to simply subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on notifications. It's free, it's effortless, and it tells YouTube I'm doing a good job. And so I hope you enjoy continuing learning this beautiful instrument. Wherever you are in the world, it is a wonderful world of discovery, a lot of things to learn. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.